Hi guys, it's Monday and as usual we're unboxing some premium cars. These are a little bit older uh, from Johnny Lightning. They're funny car legends, top fuel legends, and stock car legends. Uh, they really made some cool cars in these series. So got a little bit from each one. Um, Mostly Mopar, but a couple of Fords, and I think one Oldsmobile, and then obviously some top fuel dragsters, which usually are Hemi powered, so I guess you could kind of consider them Mopar. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. We'll start with one of the funny car legends, because I think I got more funny car legends than any of them. This is... Um, Kingfish, driven by Larry Arnold. It's a 70 Cuda uh, funny car. Really cool paint schemes on these. Usually when I bought the Johnny Lightnings, I usually would try to find what the accurate paint jobs, and that's what's cool about the funny car legends and stuff. They came with accurate paint jobs. A lot of the, like the Dragsters USA and other series, they would paint the cars like weird colors. I don't know why they did this. I guess to just sell more. But like, for example, the Christine Pro Mod should have been red, but they actually issued this car in green and blue and so on. So that's why I stayed away from those because of the fact that they were not accurate. But here's a list of all of them that came in the Funny Car Legends. Quite a few. There may have, may have even been more than this. There may have been like Series 2. I'm not sure. I don't think so. But there could have been more. But I don't know. It says collect all 18. So maybe there were only 18 of these. Um, these were released back in the late 90s. Yes, 1999. So maybe it was like the year 2000. We've seen these on the shelves. So these are about 20 years old. So... Uh, they're classics now. And um, let's go ahead and get this keen fish out of his package. Take a better look at him. And these are cool because they all had rubber tires. Sometimes Johnny Lightning is known for using like the composite mold wheels uh, where it's two-piece plastic uh, wheels. But these all had rubber tires. As you can see, die-cast chassis, die-cast body. Very detailed with the light tampos, headlight tampos, even though we, on the real car they were just painted too. Don't know why the back window wasn't cut out on this casting and it's just painted over. I'm not sure, maybe the real car was like this too, but I don't think so. I think it had like a Lexon window on the real one. Um, but yeah, a very cool casting. And body flips up, but I'm not going to go overboard with these because sometimes the hinges are not that well, uh, I guess you could say, fastened together or pressed together. And sometimes the bodies will break uh, off the chassis, so I'm not going to go overboard on this. But it did come with like plastic prop inside to hold the bodies open. So, yeah, this is Larry Arnold's Kingfish. Very cool. Metallic blue stars and stripes type of paint job so let's go ahead and take a look at one of the top fuel legends this is kind of a trendsetter i guess back in the 70s they tried this like enclosed front wheels for aerodynamics and things top fuel has evolved quite a bit throughout the past six decades uh, since it first started appearing in the late 50s, so from front engine dragsters, which there is one that we will take a look at. I thought it was behind this one, but it's not. So let's get a closer look at this guy. This is Keeling and Clayton uh, sponsored top fuel rail job, some of us called them, uh, driven by Rick Ramsey. So this is also... An all metal casting, even the chassis is metal on these. Uh, sometimes even action didn't go to this extent. Quite heavy for a little uh, rail job. And accurate scaling with these. And uh, the front wheels though are kind of like stationary. I don't even know if they roll or not. But yeah, they're kind of stuck. They're not moving. So it may just have been kind of for display purposes only on this guy. Um, trying to block out the rest of the stuff so you can kind of get this camera to focus in on it there we go so as you can see 
the chassis is metal. It does look like there's an axle there. It just don't turn. So, but it will display nice with all of my other drag cars. One day I'll show you guys the race car collection. I made some room on the shelf. That's why I'm opening these guys again. Why I say again, I bought these at a reseller here in Manila. And I think some of these had been opened before because you can kind of see tape remnants on the packages or where the glue had become kind of loose and the cars were popping off the packages. So anyways, I plan to open these someday, so I'm just going to do it today. Uh, I did get a lot of them that were already loose too that are already in the display case. So one day we'll take a look at them. But these will be the newest additions to go in the display case. On the vintage racing shelf, I call it. Um, it's actually got a little sign hanging from the top, the ceiling part of the shelf, where it says Racing Legends. Quite cool. I'm kind of proud of it. Uh, so, let's go back to these guys. This is Buddy Baker's 1984 Thunderbird. A Valvoline-sponsored car. Let's get him out and get a better look at him. And a lot of these, like, uh, regular cars, the NASCARs have opening hoods and such. So this is uh, another nicely done car. Uh, I do like this one. It's better than, like, Hot Wheels, T-Bird Stalker. Um, but still, the Hot Wheels T-Bird Stalker is a classic, too. It's pretty cool. But this one is nicely done. Cage, window net... Lexon style windows with the bracing, accurate decals, very cool car. So let's go to another Funny Car Legends. This is Rambunctious, driven by Gene Snow, and he's one of the more iconic drivers from the 60s and 70s, and let's go ahead and get this one out. Johnny Lightning did a really nice job on their Challenger funny car. It may be slightly underscaled, but the details of it are very, very nice. Um, beautiful paint job on this car, like a metallic uh, candy red type color. And the body lines, the proportions of this car are really cool. I have the Ram Chargers Challenger funny car by Johnny Lightning too. Um, this is better than Hot Wheels version. Hot Wheels has a couple in their Drag Strip Demon series. I don't really care for the proportions of the car. It actually is modeled after, after their main line. Drag Strip Demons, they redid all the castings that look very realistic except for the 71 Mustang and the 70 Challenger Funny Cars. They used a pre existing main line casting, which I don't know why they did that. But, um,. Still yet, I guess, cost savings, cost cutting, but Johnny Lightning's is much better than the Hot Wheels version. But uh, on all the other models, though, Hot Wheels takes the cake, though, on the Drag Strip Demons. So, let's go to the last Top Fuel Legends. I only had a couple of them that were still carded to open for you guys. This is a front inch. Engine Dragster by Kreutz and Donovan, driven by Steve Carbone. So, get him out. Take a look at him. And uh, Hot Wheels also did a really nice job on their front engine dragsters from the 60s, like the BB and Mulligan car, the Zipper, and a few other ones that they made for Dragstrip Demons. Those are really cool. I have some of them. But this is not bad either. They did actually a pretty good job on this. And rubber tires, all die cast. The bodies on these could be plastic. I don't think so. I think they're metal, but they could be plastic. Detailed engine. And this one has like the M&H Race Masters, which you don't see that very often. Usually they're Hoosiers or Goodyears, predominantly Goodyears. So that's kind of cool. So let's do another stock car. Cal Yarborough's 
78 Olds Cutlass. And this is the GM car I was telling you about that we were opening today. I'd like to find some of the G bodies, the Monte Carlos and such. Uh, I have not located any of those yet. Um, they actually have a couple nice Grand Prix's too, which you don't see many high cast like 80s G body Grand Prix's in this series. So there is the 78 Olds Cutlass. Did a nice job with this casting too. A little underscaled, but not much. It looks acceptable, like setting next to other cars, like we'll put it next to an accurate 71 Charger. So, not too bad. Actually, the 78 Olds was a little bit smaller than the 71 Charger, so pretty accurate. Um, yeah, I do like this car. Also, opening hood, detailed engine on this guy. All metal casting and then last but not least on the stock car legends the 70 Plymouth Superbird driven by Pete Hamilton part of the Petty racing team done in Petty Blue there were 12 stock car legends um, but I thought there were a couple more but maybe there were only 12 but uh, anyways this they had a couple Superbirds, and then they had a couple Daytonas. Fortunately, the Don, uh, the Johnny Lightning uh, Daytonas and Superbirds are a little bit underscaled. They even redid the Superbird casting to make it a little more accurate with like the roof and stuff, but still, yet it's a little bit underscaled. Um, still, yet very cool car though. Happy to have it in my collection because you don't get many Superbirds. I don't know why not many people make Superbirds. Hot Wheels makes one, but it's a little misproportioned. Johnny Lightning makes one, but it's underscaled. Hot Wheels makes a 100% one, but it's like NASCAR focused. It's nice for a NASCAR version, and it's true to scale, but it's not an original. So... Wish Auto World or somebody else like Green Light would take the initiative to make one. So let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, this was the Flying Dutchman, driven by Vander Wood, 69 Charger, uh, maybe 68. It says 68 season, but still yet yeah, could be, yeah, it's 68 because she's got the round tail lights. Usually I could tell by the marker lights, but on a funny car, there's no marker lights. They kind of are filled in because it's an all glass body but yeah one piece grill hidden headlights round headlights dead giveaway it's a 68 charger very cool casting uh, I do like this funny car then we have a Mustang 2 driven by Cheryl Greer Chain Lightning was the name of this one. Cool looking little car. Um, so this is another one of our Fords. Get him out, get a closer look of it. And uh, yeah, I guess there were more Funny Car Legends because there's another set that says on the back of her package, collect all six. So who knows? It says many more coming. So this may have been like a first release. I don't know. Let's see the date. Yeah, 1998. So the first one we've seen is 1999 copy, right? As you can see right here, the 1998. So that's it. There are probably 18 of them, 12 stock car legends, and... Let me see here. There's our top fuel legends. And there's actually quite a few of these guys. I don't even know. It doesn't specify the number. But yeah, quite a few. See one there, Swamp Rat. Would like to get that. The Don Garlitz. Don't have a Don Garlitz car in my drag racing collection yet. But here is Cheryl Gre uh, Greer's. Um... Chain Lightning Mustang 2. Very cool with the paint jobs on these. They did a good job with accuracy on the paint jobs. I do like them. There's another one that has like a sealed back window just painted on. But still yet, very cool. Nostalgic car to have in your collection. Here's a 71 Charger. Funny car. White Bear Dodge. Driven by Tom Hoover. 
And this is my favorite B body by Dodge. I love the 71 model year for Mopar. And my favorite is a 71 Plymouth B body GTX, Satellite, Roadrunner, Sebring, whatever it may be. Just love that 71 Plymouth B body. Then second is the 71 Charger Super B um, platform by Dodge. Love this car. So let's get a closer look at him. And this will wrap us up for today. And there you go. White Bear Dodge 71 Charger. Very cool. Straight out of the 70s. That paint job does look very 70s. The lettering looks very 70s. So very cool. White Bear Dodge on the front spoiler. The split grill. Very cool looking car. So, there's what we opened today. We've got the funny cars back there. Let's line them up here. And then the NASCARs in the front. And then you got two. Rels there. So 10 Johnny Lightning Legends for today. Uh, blast from the past 20 years ago, 21 years ago on some of them as we've seen with Cheryl, uh, or Cheryl Greer's Mustang too. So uh, Wednesday we'll do an unboxing of some Ford Chase cars. I've got about four or five of them that I'm going to be opening and then I've got two of them that I'm going to show you guys and tell you why I will never open those two. One of them has been featured back in one of my really old videos from over a year ago but uh, we'll take another look at it because it's very cool. It's probably one of one uh, that I know of. Actually the other chase car that I'm going to show you, a Mustang, is also probably a one of one error. So two very cool ones to take a look at and then uh, we'll unbox four or five of them. Green Machines and M2 Chase Cars by Ford. So, thanks for watching, and if you haven't subscribed yet, remember to do so. Turn on your notifications, because we will always unbox cars on a weekly basis, and every single video I do, it is unboxing videos. So, um, see you guys on Wednesday. Stay safe.